What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS5 jailbreak news update. There's a lot of news that has come out over the past few days, so there's quite a lot of stuff to dive into here. I do want to make more in-depth videos on the various different things that have come out. So I'm not going to go too much in detail in this video. This is just more to keep you guys up to speed on everything that's been going on. So firstly, as you can see here, my PS5 has Items Flow Game Manager installed, a PS4 homebrew app. Now, this is not runnable, of course, on the PS5. So Zekoshal appears to have discovered this by accident because I guess a few people figured out that they were able to install fake packages using his host, even though with other hosts, that's normally not possible. Normally, you can't install PS4 fake packages on the PS5. With the debug settings package installer, it will only allow you to install PS4 packages, retail PS4 packages. However, with his host, you could install PS5 packages and PS4 homebrew packages, fake packages as well, on the PS5, even though they are not runnable at the moment. So eventually he figured out why this was happening. It was because in his host, he had the target ID set for a debug target ID. A very simple change, but clearly it has a pretty big impact because we're now able to install PS4 fake packages. So I've got his host running here. Basically, if you just go onto, you know, the internet browser on your PS5 and you load up his host, and I think most of the other hosts have updated to reflect the change. So if you use some of the other hosts, it'll probably be the same. But, you know, for now anyway, because we're in the early days, you should just run Zeko's host in case some of the other hosts haven't updated yet. But basically, if you run his host, you run his version of Spectre's uh, exploit, then if you go into the settings and you go down to the debug settings, we can then go to our package installer. And from here, as you can see, I have some PS4 fake packages. We've got the Gold Hen Cheats Manager and Lappy's PS4 Explorer V2. So let's go ahead and try and install that. And as you can see, it just installs no problem as if it was a normal retail package. If we head back out here, you can see we now have Gold Hen Cheats Manager. So that shows up and Items Flow shows up in media. And for some reason, PS4 Explorer 2.0 shows up in the game section. But yeah, there you go. You can see they're right there, but obviously they're not playable. So it's not. it says it's not playable on a PS5. That can be changed by editing a file. I think I showed that in one of my older videos on the PS5 about messing around with the hard drive files that you can edit the compatibility list of what PS4 games are compatible. So you could make uh, these homebrew apps compatible so it would show up as though it can run on the PS5, but you still wouldn't be able to run it because of course we don't have a homebrew enabler. We don't have kernel patches that will allow us to run these fake packages. So it's just like when you install a fake package on your jailbroken PS4, but you're not running the homebrew enabler, you're just not able to run them. It'll say, you know, you can't use this content. You have to purchase it from the store. That's the general message you will get if you try to run any of these, but still pretty awesome that we can actually install them here on our PS5. Now, in terms of actual tangible benefits of this change is mainly down to PS5 packages because we can finally install PS5 packages now on our PS5, which we've not been able to do so far. So for example, I have a, a package for Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. So if we go to game package installer, you can see here, I merged them all into one. So we've got Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart and it installs here as well. So yes, you can install PS5 packages as well, but you'll see that once this game fully installs, we still can't run it without having the appropriate license file on our PS5. But what we can do with this the actual tangible benefit we can do with this right now is install game updates, PS5 game updates, because up till now, we haven't had a method to do that. We could install PS4 game updates uh, with the package installer, but not PS5 updates. Now we can install PS5 updates. The reason why that's important is typically if you're on an older firmware like 4.03, 4.51, then most of your games that are runnable on that firmware will have game updates available, but the latest game update requires a higher firmware than 4.03 or 4.51 in order to run it. So you're basically stuck running the base version 1.00, which let's face it, a lot of these games come out broken on release and at least require a day one patch to be kind of functional in the first place. So not being able to even install like the first couple of patches can be a real issue. And we can basically go to prosperopatches.com, which is an index site that indexes all of the PS5 updates by 0x199. It's basically the PS5 version of orbispatches.com. You can basically just find an update for the game that's still supported on the firmware that you're running and then you can download that and install it with the debug settings package installer here so that you can at least get one or two patches installed for your games 
in order to give you a better experience when running those games. Plus, it'll also be useful for things like, you know, patches and, and cheats that may come out for those games in the future, being able to install a specific game version. So there's definitely a tangible benefit here to this improvement in the package installer simply by changing the target ID and the exploit, which is a uh, pretty pretty impressive that uh, that Zeko just kind of stumbled across that by mistake. So I think I will do a video showing you guys how to actually install a specific game update using this method because it's not quite as simple as just downloading the package file, putting it on a USB drive and installing it. There are a few other steps in between. So we'll probably get a video out on that within the next couple of days. So another significant piece of news that's been happening here over the past few days is that Illusion has been porting over his 60 FPS patches over to the PS5. So of course this is done thanks to Astrelski's Lib Hijacker, the homebrew POC, which allows us to basically access like foreign processes, allows us to access things like the eboot.bin of a game and patch it on boot as well as doing things like modify the memory remotely, as we've seen from Diz Mods from my last update video. And this is pretty exciting because there's a lot of performance that's been left on the table with some of these games where the developers never bothered to release a official PS5 patch to improve the performance on PS5. Some of them haven't even released a PS4 Pro patch. Uh, they're still running on the base PS4 settings on PS5, like a 30 FPS lock at 1080p, for example. So this is obviously pretty huge because with these unofficial patches, we can get those games up to 60 FPS at 1080p, maybe even push higher resolutions. I'm not sure, but that would be interesting. So this is actually a real tangible benefit of jailbreaking your PS5, which we've not really had up till now. Up till now, we've just been playing around with things. There's nothing really beneficial we've really been able to do with a jailbroken PS5 up until now but obviously unlocking performance with PS4 games on PS5 that is a tangible benefit now to jailbreaking your PS5 which is pretty awesome plus also dev menus and debug menus as he shows here so here you can see he has the dev menu enabled for Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection which is the PS5 version of uh, Uncharted 4 and Uncharted Lost Legacy combined into one package so he's got that working as well so it's not just 60 fps patches so obviously this is really exciting stuff i'm sure a lot of you guys want to know when you can get your hands on this this is still work in progress at the moment and i think the main reason why this hasn't been released is because the actual uh, homebrew poc the lib hijacker by astrelski that's not actually kind of finalized yet i think that's still being worked on so there's no real i guess reason for them to release these 60 FPS patches until we have a finalized version of the lib hijacker that's convenient to use because at, at the moment I think you have to compile it from the source and then you have to like inject two payloads in order to get it to work and uh, yeah it's not the the most convenient setup so I think eventually it might be integrated into the actual you know web host itself so you can just run it and it'll run both payloads one after the other kind of like the Linux loader in the PS4 how it has to load the Mira loader first and then it uses the Mira loader to then load the Linux uh, payload so it could be integrated in a similar way where you just select an option in the web kit to you know run a 60 fps patch or to run a piece of homebrew for example that might be the kind of thing we see with the lib hijacker once it's fully integrated so I think that's pretty much it oh no wait there's one other thing we have uh, FTP version 1.3 by Sistro so Sistro released a new FTP payload that allows you to read and write to the system directories. I think it's system EX and system uh, you can now write to, which you were able to do with the uh, Blu-ray drive exploit. There was a FTP payload for the Blu-ray drive exploit that would allow you to do that, but you couldn't do it within the actual, uh, you know, Spectres exploit within the WebKit, but you can do that now. So for people who don't have a Blu-ray drive in their computer, or if they don't have a Blu-ray drive in their PS5, because it's a digital edition, then you'll be able to run this FTP payload and you, and you can now read and write to your uh, system directories, which you weren't able to do before. So yeah, as you can see, there's clearly a lot of things happening right now with the PS5. And uh, yeah, it's hard to keep up with it all, but I am going to be, you know, doing some more in-depth videos on some of these topics. So stay tuned for those. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.